So this was my first instructable I did about two years ago and it's a very successful little electric motor but at the time I made it I wondered if it was possible to do an electronic version uh, so this instructable is about the electronic version but first we'll have a look at this one um, and highlight why electronic is better than this version you've got a cam and a brush here and obviously they're going to wear and at the same time you've got the battery power is going through the shaft onto the shaft support and uh, it actually spark erodes so the uh, hole gets bigger and bigger and then the performance drops off don't get me wrong it's a very successful motor and even after a couple of years this one still works quite well So this is the electronic version and uh, there's a few obvious differences. key bit here is I have removed the cam and replaced it with a uh, disc which has slots cut into it. Those slots are detected by an optical pickup here and then the signal is fed to this little circuit board down here. That circuit board has got a microchip PIC 12F675 and that does the uh, controls of the motor. You've also got three pots here which allow you to adjust how the motor is running. I'm just going to explain those. You've got the red one allows you to adjust the duration of the pulse i.e. how long the magnet's on. The blue one allows you to change the timing of the pulse so you can advance it and retard it. And then the yellow one is a speed governor which is basically a hit and miss speed governor. Um, if it detects the speed is too quick, it just turns off the magnet and waits for the motor to slow down before turning it back on. The power to the magnet is turned on via a logic level FET here. And I've added a couple more features onto the PCB. Uh, in particular, you could disconnect the connector that goes to the three pots and do in-circuit serial programming. Um, so you can change the program on the chip very quickly and on the side of the board down here you've also got um, another set of four spare pins which uh, allow you to connect an oscilloscope or another circuit to allow you to measure the pulse and uh, determine the res per minute of the motor. So you can see I've connected the motor to a USB oscilloscope and I'll just give it a run so you can see the difference. first thing you'll notice it's very quiet, there's no noise coming from the cam and the brush. The other thing you should be able to see on the screen is that the motor sorting out its own timing as it, it speeds up. Once it's settled at a certain speed we can then play with the timing to see if it can be improved. See it's going slower quicker. You'll get to a uh, time where it's the maximum speed you can achieve so then it's best to give it a bit more pulse. And now you can see the speed's increasing quite rapidly. But you can also hear there's noise and that's because the magnet's on as the uh, rotor passes it, so it's best to adjust the timing again. Each time I'm doing this the speed's increasing. So there you go, that's quite good speed. So now we'll have a look at the hit and miss speed governor. What you'll see straight away is that the uh, magnet has turned off. And it'll then only turn on to maintain the speed.
what you can then do is uh, turn down the magnet and reduce the speed as low as you like. As you'll see, it's quite possible to get quite a slow speed. So there you go, that's the main differences between the electronic version and the mechanical version. And the last thing I want to show you is what's possible if you combine the electronic motor with a simple Arduino circuit. So just disconnect the oscilloscope. And here's a Arduino Uno with the LCD on it. I'm not sure if you can quite make that out, but uh, the Arduino is displaying the speed. In this case, we've got 500 revs per minute. And the maximum speed is approximately 2,400. And we have had speeds up to 5,000. Um, the beauty of this system is you can change the number of poles and just change the uh, disc at the end. So the quickest we found was to only have two poles and we did manage over 5,000. At the same time it got exceptionally hot and the uh, super glue hole and the coils on started to melt. That's 3,000 reps. That seems to be about the limit. The last thing I wanted to show you was uh, on the back here you've got two LEDs. You've got a red one which shows us power and you've got a green one which shows when the magnet's turned on. And uh, here you can see it's flashing, that's because we've got the hit and miss on. Now you can see it's on permanently. But you should be able to see it fading and getting brighter with the pulse duration. And that's my electronic motor.